ready. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are embarking on the final episodes of Prison Break. This is episode 8, and then we will have episode 9. Should I do a double upload for this one? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I should. I, I have been doing double uploads for every for the two final episodes of every season, I believe. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I should do eight and nine together today. So two final episodes, I will have a season review after this. So this will be a very long video, um, for my YouTubians out there really and truly appreciate you guys for staying with me on this journey. For those of you, for all average, we we averaged around, I want to say about 250 views per video, per upload. So for all 250 guys of you out there that consistently push that button, push on my face when you see it pop up on your screen or wherever, I legitimately, legitimately appreciate it genuinely and i know i'm not the fast talker i know i'm not the best of the best out there you know i just provide content and provide my perspective on it that's pretty much all i do and i try to be as respectful as possible i speak my views and you have the opportunity to rebut my views no problem i know I probably have lost a couple of people along the way because of stuff that I may have said on a video or whatever the situation is, but that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I know not everybody is going to agree with me. Um, and I accept that, you know, I accept that. So, um, thank you guys for all you guys that stuck around anyways, dealt with my antics and whatever. Cause I know sometimes in some videos I'm, super excited on other videos you know i don't talk a lot or whatever the situation is uh, but you still stuck around to watch and i really do appreciate that and shout out to everybody as well that is on the patreon over there supported through the journey and you wanted to get early access and all of this other stuff i appreciate you guys for sticking with me throughout this journey now um there's there's shows that i will be starting um that is going to take a while. It's probably going to be a, a good month or so before, um, before you guys even see this video. So you're watching this intro now. This is probably like a month later that you're seeing this. Um, so if you guys want to see what we have available over there on Patreon, I will tell you guys what's over there. Once I get to starting it, I've started mad men already over there. I'm planning to start. I know I've seen a lot of people saying that, why are you watching Lost? It's so dis. Listen, man. I'm only. I'm watching what is suggested. Okay? I'm watching what's suggested. That's what I do. I watch what's suggested. So, yeah, there may be a lot of Lost fans out there. Did you ever think of that? Maybe there's a bunch of people. I mean, look at Prison Break. I would have never watched this if it wasn't a suggestion. And look how much I enjoyed it. You know, so you got to keep that in mind, too. It's not about a single person or a couple of you guys. It's about what the people on the channel want to see. And loss has been been suggested on my channel for a very long time. And that's why I'm going to watch it. It's I believe it's six seasons or seven. I, I don't even remember how many seasons is it. I think it is six seasons. Um, and, you know, We'll see when we get there. I don't even know what the show is about. What people getting lost? I don't, I don't know what the show is about. I do remember that the show was huge back in the day. It's kind of like, I think Lost and The Walking Dead. Uh, don't quote me on that. Because I, I, I think at the same time when I was hearing about the popularity of The Walking Dead, I think 
loss was going on at the same time as well. Maybe not, maybe not like they started at the same time or something like that, but I believe Lost was one of those shows that I heard about, just didn't know what it was about, just heard it through the grapevine that it was a good show. Um, people in my family have watched Lost. I just never, you know what I'm saying? Can't watch every TV show at the same time. You know what I mean? So now that I'm doing this, it provides me with the opportunity to, to go back and watch a lot of these shows that were popular back in the day. And people want me to watch them. If it's suggested, eventually I'm going to get around to it. So you can't just look at it and say, oh, it's a bad show, man. You shouldn't watch it. Listen, I told you guys not doing this for the money okay <laughs> it's not for the money i'm not in a rush to get to popular shows or whatever um there's a couple of shows that has been suggested especially if you are subscribed to my patreon top tier um where you know whatever is suggested there goes to the top of the list and i started on patreon eventually it'll come to youtube so those shows i'm watching as well um that I will be watching. Um, I would suggest if you do sign up for that tier, suggest something that I can do quickly, not something that has like 10 seasons because that way you can, you, I can watch it, put it on Patreon for you. You know what I'm saying? You want to see me watch something? You want to know my thoughts on something? Whatever the situation is, that is a legitimate option for you guys. If you don't want to wait around for years for me to get to a series that you want to watch. Um, so I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you guys will stick around subscribe to the channel Also, my original channel has a lot of reactions that you guys have not seen for, for shows that you guys have probably have seen and want to see um, My perspective on those shows as well Go to my original channel look at the playlist tons of TV shows over there Trust me a lot of my TV a lot of those shows are not on this channel They're gonna come here at, at some point <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but we'll see about that. So sorry for the long intro. Anyways, this, these are the last two episodes of prison break. There's going to be a review at the end for the show. So make sure you stick around for that. I appreciate you guys. Trust me. I love you guys, man. You guys, you know, one comment, one like keeps me going. Um, that's all you have to do. Free responsibility. I appreciate you guys. Let's jump into the reaction and I will see you guys right after for the review. Back in the water. with you in the zoo i go there to think 18 times in the past month a lot of thinking i was figuring out how to get your guy out of baron kia hmm. turns out he's not just a rebel leader he's a murderous sociopath it's the only way to make omelets i need to know more about our targets if i'm facilitating escapes we can't have surprises new ink since the last time i saw you working on a new plan no nope. no new plan just get tired of looking at empty skin uh-huh you know, it was those tats of Fox River that caught my eye in the first place. I had to know everything about the man who wore his plans on his skin. Yeah, the secret to real power is to never betray your intentions, to wear nothing on your sleeve, and to never let anyone see your face. The student is probably working for him, Next too. Next time I'm sitting in solitary, I'll think of you in here. Running the world in air-conditioned comfort. I've spent my time in the field. You all set for Myanmar? It's only a few weeks off. That's why I'm here. I want to bring someone on board. Oh, really? He'll have my back and he'll speed things up. Increase our odds. <sighs> I'll always be a step ahead of you. You know that. That That's I great. Telling. <laughs> it's what's behind the eyes. It's like... Professor, 
It's like, like telling somebody. It's like, like you're talking to a child. I'll always be a step ahead of you, son. Don't think you can fool me. <laughs> she, she has a cold. Junior. What is it, Michael? Junior, that's the code. Is like wrong. something is wrong. Yeah, she calls him Junior. She's not supposed to do that. I don't even know what was this place again. I gotta get back to the states. Slow down. Yemen. You can't allow this from him. I believe there'd be no flight in the world. Was it Yemen? <laughs> Maybe my two. How do you know? That text she referred to our son as Junior. Yeah. We agreed, but never call him that. He's baiting you, Michael. It worked. Oh, I uh, dropped her off at work while you were at school. That is quite a pirate ship. <laughs> Although, it would be a little hard to sail with the mast that far forward. Your ship might tip over. The mast has to be there. It's not just a ship. It's a treasure map. <laughs> what do you mean? It's for Jimmy. We had Legos for each other. I always find his. He doesn't always find mine. How is this drawing a map? <laughs> This is the park. That's the playground. And this is the sidewalk. Impressive. You put a code in the drawing. Well done, Mike. Well done. Yeah. That's how they do things. I tried everyone. I'm out of resources. Kid, bro. States, all my contacts. Just like his dad. To make sure they're okay. You got balls, Burroughs. You actually think I want to help you? What if I can get you the 100K? 100K. How are you going to come up with that? Crawling around the back alleys of Chicago? I'm not in Chicago. I'm in Marseille. Those flights you got coming out of Europe? The fentanyl flights? I need a few seats. I'll tell you what. I'll make a few calls. Because either I'm going to see you and get that money, or I'm gonna see when you're gonna get something a whole lot worse. Now we know they survived the strike in the Mediterranean, we can be pretty sure he's coming back to Ithaca. I need some clarification. Why would he come back here? To the States. He's more wanted here than anywhere else in the world. Great. Sarah, he hasn't told him. <clears throat> He wants to kill me. Thinks I stole his life, ruined him. Which speaks to his dissociative mind. I mean, he's a murderer, a turncoat, a terrorist. But we'll use it. I'll be the bait if I have to. So we can go about taking him down once and for all. Screen grab of the Skype transmission he sent from I the I told desert. you that he read nerd, nerd guy worked for him. Blue Hawaii guy. But it could have been secretly subreddited to another yet unknown recipient to use the information encoded in it. Information? Um, under spycamporn.com, both of which carry this. Images of the Harlan Gaines murder. What's the bastard doing rubbing that in our faces? Of all things to encrypt, why that? What's that get you? Steganographically a lot. Steganography is the practice of concealing information in the code that makes up digital files. Nice work. But the truth is, if I've done my job, he may reveal his intentions to us first. What is the plan, Michael? They don't know everything about him, about Poseidon. They don't know everything about him. Wait, Chicago? I thought I was going with you. Not until you find out why you're my whip hand. I have to go to Chicago to find that out. Safe travels. In the, the phone he texted me with was located in Lyon, France last night. It was turned off in an airport terminal at 11.51 p.m. He doesn't understand that everything, when Michael is planning something, everything he does is for a purpose we be for when, especially when he has it planned out this season one we got him do you though uh, excuse me excuse me you're not allowed wow right this way
Did you really think he was gonna be there? <laughs> Looks like the game's still going. I'm guessing you got about five million bucks worth of fentanyl in here. So what? You and your brother here are gonna lecture me? We were actually debating on whether I should give you the hundred K or not. He says it's blood money. I agree. Grab these guys, bring them to the back, and shoot them. I don't think you want to add murder to your arrest warrant. Wait. Arrest warrant? That guy out there? It's a DEA informant. We have him in our pocket. He owes us. He's got three vans full of agents <laughs> are waiting for his call. Oh, I got it. got Franklin out there and your poses. Unless you forgive my brother's debt, then our informant won't make the call. What do you say, Luca? Mano y mano. Get that guy off. Bring these guys to the back. They make a move, he makes a call. Yeah? I think you're bluffing. I warned you. You shoot us, there's dozens of witnesses now. Let's go. No idea how happy I am to see you back home. We're not home yet. All right, so what's next? How do we get this son of a bitch? We don't do anything. Your part is over. He knows your face. I've been tracking you since you went to Yemen. You've been a warrior, and I owe you. But your face is a liability now to you and your family. I don't want you to risk that. It's a punch you don't see coming that knocks you out. That's my Sheba. You take care of her, all right? I take care of him, you mean? <laughs> I love you, brother. Love you, too. Man, you, you love to see a family comes together. This has been... You see, a lot of times, I'm going to compare this to something. Let me tell you why, you know, Fast and Furious has basically become a, a meme. And the reason why the movies just, I mean, not only has the movies become ex this out of this freaking world, right? Literally, <laughs> right? Not only has they become out of this world and become, you know, kind of like a joke. You know what I mean? If they built... If the writing was half as good as the action in it, in it is in those movies, people would flock. They would make billions every time, even though those movies still make really good money, right? Really, 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 really good money. Their box office for sure. Um, but the way how they take their time and turn these guys you know what I'm saying? They've been through so much together. I mean, we're coming from Franklin, you know, almost committing suicide, was going to turn on Michael to save his family, all of those things. To put all of that in the past, for them to be here now as, you know, what they are, from w where they're coming from, from season one, it's an amazing thing to see how the character development has, has just come around. And I just don't understand... And I keep saying this throughout the series. I, I don't understand. What what do you guys look for in a TV show? Is it just action, 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 action? Because that's the only thing that I can think of why you guys like season one and doesn't like the rest of the show. That's the only thing that I can think of is that you're a person that just loves action, 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 action. You don't like character development. You don't like story. Because if you do, there's no way that you can look at this throughout the show. Yes, the show can be, there's certain inconsistencies throughout the show, but that's every TV show. No TV show or anime or whatever is absolutely consistent throughout. There's going to be hiccups, you know? There's going to be hiccups. There's going to be stuff that you'll be like, I don't know about that one, Chief. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. 
I've watched enough TV shows to realize that none of them is perfect. None of them is going to be perfect. There's going to be things that happen that just seem like, you know, the, the, the writers were on crack that day. You know what I'm saying? And whether you think the show goes downhill or not, there's an incredible story being told here over five seasons. I, I, I don't understand how, for me, you know, maybe, maybe it just doesn't take that much to entertain me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just what it is. <laughs> When you need me again, you know where to find me. Season okay. one, in a very good way. That doesn't bother you, what you just saw in there? Down in the basement with his wife, the woman he says he fell for? Stop. Oh, you having I'm second thoughts now? Avoid after this. Oh, you can't just leave, bro. After we get Schofield, Outus, whatever his name is, I'm done. Kill you. There's no getting out. If you think that way. What do they prisoner. do to them? They, he does something to their ear. Guys. Something ain't right. Part is still here. Come on. It was all staged. Clever. But Bruno's is gonna die for it. No. Unless this cab's got pontoons, ain't gonna happen. These coordinates are in the middle of Lake Michigan. Get ready to get us out of here as fast as you can. Link. Be careful. Oh man, he been sending her messages. I wasn't to contact anyone, but she was my wife. I reached out to her in a way I thought only she would know. But he knew my ways too. service i'm here to pick up a lady and child they got another ride hit the road you sure hit the road okay act the tiniest bit flustered now repeat these words back to me loud enough to be heard they didn't show i'm coming back to you now they didn't show i'm coming back to you now now we have a game He's already revealed his brother his biggest piece. Soon he'll have to show his face. Trailer. Please take him down. This 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 woman here take Lincoln down with no gun. I'ma be like, yo. Cap hard cap. I lost him. Hey! Can you hear me? No, you're in a dead zone. What are you doing here? I lost reception in the garage. Damn it, you fell right into it. Now they've got a mark on us. This <laughs> guy is probably one of the most <laughs> immature. Couldn't see her. What do you mean you couldn't see her? There's no way we could have. She's hurt. Oh my god. Sarah. What's that? My son did this. He's good. There might be something here. It's a ship. A pirate ship with three pirates. Man, woman, and a boy. It's me, Sarah, and Mike. What do you think that is? It's a, it's a many-headed hydra reaching up to attack. 
anything against Jacob? Must be. He's got my DNA. He didn't even know you were coming. Sarah must have told him. I don't know. She must have told him I was coming. There's definitely something here. Definitely. Or it's a trap set by... Um... Jacob. What is it? Link? I got it. This ship, this galleon, the body of water it's on. I looked at the map, and there's a lake. A lake shaped exactly like it. Up in the Finger Lakes district. Long Lake. This X would be on the east shore of that lake. He's telling us where he is. I'm trying to figure out if he lost his mind or not. That's only one way to find out. Of the refugees. Link, I'm a part of this fight too. Well, we all know this was coming. Jesus. I was wondering how long it's going to take them to get this out of the way. Jesus. Dad. It's goodbye. I can never forgive myself if something happened here. You know, we already know Link can get all the bitches. <laughs> God, I've been thinking. Because a hard bargain's been presented to me. <laughs> And I'm considering something that's that's gonna seem like the old Theodore Bagwell. Tea bag. Tea bag. <laughs> it won't be the work of a cold oh, a buoy. And it won't be for sin. Or for hate. If there's blood on my hands, know this world. What the hell is It'll in that? For love. I'm sick of the lake house. I want to go home. I know. I know. I'll go home soon. Don't worry. Is mom okay? She's, uh, she's a little under the weather. She's just resting. Thanks, man. That was fun. Yeah, hey, anytime. Yeah, great. Thank you. What kind of honorific is wit? Who's asking? Man drawn into this by destiny. Okay. How about you take off? I'm exactly kind. This strange one coming up to me in the middle of the night, you know? Only one person calls me a whip. You ain't him. Nobody calls you that. Man that gave me this hand. Nobody. Kill him? We all got handles, don't we? Aldous, teabag, whip. But you're Dave Martin, aren't you? How'd you know that? Huh? West Virginia, honky-tonk, 1991, pretty waitress. Bunch of personal business between us after closing. And then I get, cause Johnny Law's breathing down my neck. Lacking a forwarding address. I never heard from her again. For trying to tell me. Schofield this is his son? Is looking for a partner. Coleman Prisons looking for someone who could handle himself. You reminded him of a certain someone. And so he did a little research. Ain't no, no damn know. way. It's t son. Did you learn it? Or was it ingrained in you? It was ingrained in you, son. That's crazy. We gotta take a moment for that. We gotta take a moment for that, bro. We gotta take a moment for that because, listen, you guys know I'm not the biggest teabag fan. <laughs> that ain't, but I'm a sucker for redemption stories. Um, teabag did his time. You know what I'm saying? He did his time, paid his debt to society. He did his time. Even though I still feel like he should have rotted in jail, but. Yeah, anybody else would really like, you know what I'm saying? But he did it, got out, you know what I'm saying? And now Michael is kind of, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm a sucker for redemption. So I think this is a chance for him to be better. And he thought he would have to kill someone. And I think, I think the reason why Michael said that to him, I think the reason why Michael said that to him was, 
um, was to tell him that T-Bag has to die. I think that's who he needs to kill. T-Bag has to die because now you realize that you're a father. So you have to be different. So that's crazy. Almost made me tear up. I'm not even going to lie. Almost made me tear up. It almost got me. <laughs> I think that dude is watching. Hold up. I think Jacob's coming back. I can't believe I'm seeing my son. Something's wrong. Is she dead? The service here, but something's wrong. Do anything. He's coming back. It's not Jacob. You're clear. Get your family. See you or it is. And it Oh. Because I'm like, Jacob did not leave in a, in a Mercedes. That's how I was like, that can't be him. You know who I am? I got your map. Draw map. It's a trap. <laughs> it's not her. Me. Oh, you son of a. Bro, what the hell? Who did you splash? <laughs> Who did they just splash? All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit here. Before we jump into the next episode, um, this is, we're going to the final episode of the show, right? And that was, that was, that was done so good. The situation between T-Bag and, and Whip. That was done so well. And and man, y'all are y'all are tripping, bro. Y'all are tripping. Let's get <laughs> let's get to the, this episode, bruh. Can't believe y'all say this show go, went downhill. What? Man, I, I don't know. Y'all sipping on something. I need a sip off shit. <laughs> what we're doing was advancing this country's cause. How does freeing a man like Abu Ramal advance this country's cause? Well, it doesn't. The missions before, <laughs> they were for the good of the country, but no, this one wasn't about country. It was personal. It was about you. Kept telling myself this was going to be my last lie, that it would fade with time as we had anniversaries. Raised that beautiful child. That is not your child. I raised him. That love is real. It's not a lie. You are using him as bait. You son of a bitch. She knows not to hurt him. You were so obsessed with Michael that you would risk my son. You don't love me. Your ego's too big. You're too busy trying to be the smartest man in the room. And then you met my husband. And you realized <laughs> he's smarter than you. And then you met him, no, nigga. So. Then you met I'm him. Because <laughs> he is him. <laughs> real, Sarah. Past tense. I still... Love you. It's past tense for me, honey. <laughs> you probably heard you that. You'll go the whole nine yards to help one man steal another man's wife. No, no, no. Don't talk to him. Or what? You'll do something you're not already going to do. You're going to kill me. No matter how many times you tell me you love me first. Shut up. Michael didn't kill Harlan Gaines. He had no motive. Shut up. He's the one with the motive. Harlan Gaines was your CIA director and he was looking into Jacob. He was going to put him in prison. <laughs> Yo. Damn it! <laughs> Yo, you Take done done it now. Tape it shut. This place is gonna burn down in ten minutes. There will be two bodies in it. And if it's any solace, our son won't be one of them. Our son? I think he's delusional, bro. <laughs> I think this dude killed her. 
I think that's what happened. Wait. What are you doing up here, Van? I just want to make sure that we're getting the right oh, guy. Oh, maybe Asking she killed him? The position is not so favorable let right now. Go. Where he's standing, he's standing right in front of the door. Maybe we should ask questions, damn it. If Schofield killed Harlan Gaines, we take him to the police if we have to. We get this done the right way. Poseidon would never let us live. He won't find us. She's gonna kill him. I told you, we want to disappear. We disappear. I can make that happen. She's gonna and kill him. And we're gone. No leaving 21 Void. Your uncle's at the end of the driveway. Don't turn around. Run! Go! Get her ass, Sarah. Where's our boy? Uncle Damn, Lincoln. y'all just... Uncle Lincoln! No, 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 it's me. What's going on? They're shooting. I'm scared. Go, go, go. Schofield said that it would deliver me, both of us. And all I have to do is just get it to him to understand why. Can you give me this? By your hand, you shall know the glories of your progeny. It, 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 it's, it's progeny, progeny, dear boy. Progeny. And our world will be made right forevermore. Originally, I thought it was a religious thing, you know, son of God and all that. By now, I know it's it's my own progeny. Glorious thing, indeed. Even if I don't have a damn clue how to deal with it. <laughs> well, you and me both. Season as well. It's good when you've made so much money, you can produce your own show. There's an even bigger code encrypted into the eyes. And what's it say? I don't know yet. But with the amount of processing power I throw at it, we're going to find out real soon. <laughs> I figured if I showed Grace to a man who'd never seen it before in his life, maybe he'd be grateful. Do something for us. All of us. Himself included. And our lives shall be made right. Forevermore. I'm talking about normal everyday life, the kind of freedom none of us has known in a long, long time. But Poseidon's not just gonna let us go. He's got me and your son in an iron grip. Someone has to make him let go. Do you understand? Oh. I'm tracking where you're going. I really in agree with the agreement with this, but <laughs> you know what I mean? can't bring back the old tea bag man you can't bring the bloodlust back you know what i'm saying we were just talking about you i'm giving you one last chance to save your life hand the boy over or i can't be held responsible for what happens next are you threatening my life only if you don't hand him over i never hand over my son he's not your son and never was stay away from my dad you hear stay away Good boy. Where is he? Where is Poseidon? He'll be dealt with. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. If you get caught, if he gets caught, he's going back to the oh, pen. Come on, come, come on. on. And if I don't do it, cram it. I want you free and clear. And if that's the only way to do it, then I gotta be the one that does it. Schofield ain't gonna do it. He don't got the killing gene. No one is getting caught. There's a very specific order to this. I'm gonna find out once and for all what you were really doing there. What you were really planning. And then I'm gonna kill you. He said, 
says the secret to real power is to never betray your intentions to wear nothing on your sleeve and to never let anyone see your face I'll always be a step ahead of you I can see everything in your eyes and he told you it's what's behind the eyes <laughs> what I decrypted the code from the eyes ah it's what's behind the eyes that counts yo how bravo michael However you got in there, bravo. You sent me to the zoo so you could get into my office. But you and I both know your threat's a hollow one because you know I've got something that's even more valuable to you, your son. So we're back to game theory. Do we work together, make a trade so we both get what we want? Or are you gonna try something underhanded? You know I will. As will I. So why don't we cut past that and make a deal? Sure, Michael. Yeah, let's do that. Old shipyard, warehouse A, 5 p.m. tomorrow. Fine. Hi, Sarah Schofield. I'm an internist, actually, up in Ithaca. Do you have any idea where my brother-in-law might have gone? No idea. Right. I guess dude survived. What are you doing? You had me running there for a bit. Thinking I'd done something wrong. You did. You stiffed me a hundred grand. No. It's blood money. No debts with blood money. So we're clear. Damn. And the man beat you up that's half dead? Jeez, you suck, guys. Luca. <laughs> Are you gonna be running again? Oh, it's time to real. Call the cops on your fentanyl operation, you dummy. Oh yeah, you going to jail for a long time, buddy. He's an evil man and he's got my son. You've got to know someone. Something. So I, I can get my boy back. You sure this is where my son is? Thank you. Needed somebody to be there while you don't want to die you alone. Yeah. Now, where is my son? You ask questions, you know, there isn't a chance in hell I'm gonna answer. So, we're back to the game. The truth is, we never left. You're not holding the cards. I am. Are you? Every law agency in the world is looking for you. Doesn't sound like a position of power to me. Whoa, didn't expect that. It's beneath you, Michael. Let him go! Now that, I expected. Thank you. You don't think I expected this? We can do this all day. Play contingency after contingency, but do you really want to do that? Ah! No! Damn it! Damn it! Back off, or I kill him right now. And that must be the last of your contingencies. Thank you so much for showing me, Michael. Oh, yeah. You should also know I called the FBI. An anonymous tip saying that Canyon Outis would be at this warehouse. Okay, they're in the building. There's no more time. The hard drives, or we'll start shooting your pieces. Hand over the damn boy! Shut up. Lady, put the gun down, walk away. I cannot be held accountable for what's about to happen. He moves! I shoot a guy in a bar fight once. He's talking yang to my girl. Give me one second to do it. Don't do it! Should we come too far to let this son of a bitch win? This wasn't the plan! Don't do it! Some sons of bitches just gotta go. We're the only ones who can do it in. All right, bye. David! Try me. <laughs> Whip! 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 
with this wasn't the plan. I got him. It's okay. I got him. Why did he do that, man? Didn't expect her to have another gun. It's that way. What? You shot him, you bitch. They shouldn't have tried me. Like that. <sighs> Man, go easy, son. That kind of sucks, man. How are we doing? Hey. Mm. Freaking nerd. <laughs> I did. Okay. Oh. Good news for you. But now you've got no reason to give me what I want. Which kind of makes it bad news for you. Federal agent! He recreated the scene. Blank in the gun. He recreated the scene so he can put it back on the tape. The cabin. That's what he needed this guy for. Camera taking my picture. Genius. Really, but no one will ever go for it. The truth is whatever you tell people it is. You taught me that. Oh, too bad the feds will be here in two minutes, see your little diorama here, and know it's all bull. Except none of this will be here. Neither will I. <laughs> Bastard. Michael. Mm, get his ass. Mm, that must feel good. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Jacob Anton Ness. Can I help you? You're under arrest for participation in the murder of Harlan Gaines. If you're talking about that We're nonsense... We're talking about blood it? evidence found in your office at the university. An office only you have access to. What? How? <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> These are the missing frames from the night of the killing. The ones Poseidon edited it out. Yes, I was there. I've never denied it. They forced me to, so he could frame me. And with the revelation of the additional blood evidence found in his office at the university, it neatly supports your theory, doesn't it? That he was there. That he was the gunman. I guess I would have one question for you. Who are director of the CIA. I'm aware of that. That's why I sent you the email with the evidence directly. Look too closely at this evidence. Metadata in the pictures, degraded blood evidence. You might find some problems with Depends that. how motivated you are to look closely. Poseidon killed your deputy director. He was a cancer inside your agency for years. I've shown you his face! Now calm down. Andrew Nelson in custody. Thanks to your brother. Once we saw your email, we interrogated him. He's fully disclosed 21 Void's conspiracy to frame you for the murder of Harlan Gaines and bury your identity by giving you a new one. Kenyal Audis. 
You're free to go, Mr. Schofield. Finally. The level of ingenuity that you displayed with all of this. We could use a person like that. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> There is one thing you can do for me. It's strange. Mm -hmm. Being alive again. Not running. Yeah. <laughs> I've been running too. I know. <laughs> and you actually need an anchor of sorts. Because. Leave you by it's yourself, really you just get yourself messed up in all kinds of stuff. Work, yeah. yeah. And the two of you deserve God knows you guys deserve some Love rest. You. Love you too. Damn, D bag, old stomping grounds. Yeah, just not planning on sticking around. That's all. Is that right? Oh, He's gonna be sharing a bunk with Have tea bag. <sighs> or is it big dude? Oh. Is up. <laughs> All right. So at long last, at long last, we're here at the end of an incredible journey. Prison break. Um, you know, when I, was, when I was about to start the show, as you guys know, I had not great expectations for this show um of course it was it, it was suggested by subscribers um but i didn't think i was gonna enjoy it as much as i did i always come into these shows with not you know over the top expectations um you know, because my experience might not be the same as others because I view things a lot different from, you know, most people. I interpreted things differently. Um, you know, the things that I might enjoy, I don't think a lot of other people enjoy the same things. Um, that is just my thinking in, in, in my brain when it comes on to stuff like stuff like this, right? It's like, it's one of those things where it's just like things that I enjoy might be a ton of other people that enjoy it, but it's far from the social norm. It's kind of like my love for anime. Now anime has kind of gone mainstream, if you will. So you have a lot more fans of anime, especially over here in the West um, than before, right? So it's a little bit different now. Like back then anime wasn't, like you had Dragon Ball Z fans, that's about it. But now it's a lot different. So it's kind of like that, that how I think in things when the way how I think and the way how I interpret things, I feel like not a lot of people interpret it the same way. I might have a perspective that a lot of people don't have when watching a TV show because it's not, I kind of go a little bit in depth about what I'm watching, kind of draw parallels between the show and real life kind of show things from a um a, a writer's perspective of what i believe the writers was trying to convey to the audience so there's a there's a lot of those things like i don't do deep dive videos and stuff like that i think it's something that i could do maybe later on you know what i'm saying maybe something i could do if i wanted to but that it's it's time consuming so i don't have the time to do deep dives and you know into these shows and stuff like that and post like a one hour video of me interpreting certain things that i see and what i observe so i just try to 
make it like you know do like a 20 20 to 30 minute review of the show at the end of the series and i use three things i use three things to rate my shows i am going to preface this by saying which i always do is that reviews are very extremely and utterly subjective okay don't take it to heart this is from my, my point of view this is not gospel okay it's extremely subjective it's about my experience and what i chose to tell you that i enjoy rather than the things that i did not enjoy right so take it as you will so i use three things i use audio visual right or you know what i'm saying cinematography if you will you know what i'm saying setting sound design great stuff right that's in one category i call that the visual aspect of things right um what makes the show click what makes it appealing to the eye you know what i'm saying and to the ear um next thing is rewatchability right that is an aspect as well and the final one is of course story and story that involves character character development um all this great stuff that makes it what it is right what did the writers do to keep me watching um throughout the series right i tend to start with rewatchability first um just to give you guys an idea of kind of like how much i enjoyed the show would this be something that i watch in the it, later years if i might come back to prison break and i'm gonna say this it's on a out of 10 i rate all of these out of 10 so rewatchability is at an eight for me i'm gonna tell you guys why it's at an eight for me i feel like this is a show that I would, I would recommend to family members and sit down and watch it with them again. I don't know if, I don't know if this is something that I would pick up. You know what I'm saying? Pick up these Blu-rays and watch by myself later on. So that's the distinctive dif difference. I think I would rewatch this with a family member, a friend whatever the situation is, maybe even watch other people react to it on YouTube. Um, but other than that, I don't think this is something that I would put in the Blu-ray player, you know, 10 years from now and say, yo, let's watch some prison break. Oh, I don't remember how this show went. Um, because I'm the type of person like this. I don't know how bad my memory is going to get in my later years. I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Maybe I'll forget about the show completely. and want to watch it again. That could be the scenario. But usually when I uh, at this year that I'm speaking right now, usually when I if I see something that I've watched before and I'm watching it again, I usually remember everything that happens. Pretty much. You get what I'm saying? It, usually most of it comes back to me if it's not too far gone. Um, it's kind of like to give you guys an example, I'm watching um one piece right now which is an anime you guys might not be interested but um it's an example just go with it i'm not telling you guys to go watch anime or anything like that it's a show that i've that i watch up to a certain point in the past we have not gotten to the point where I've, where i stopped watching the show but i'm re-watching it from episode one because i do not remember most of the details that happened in the show right so but there are certain things that i do remember and i tell people that are watching um my reactions to keep in mind that a lot of these major events that happen in the anime up until this point i already know about it so if you don't get a reaction out of me just understand that that's what it is like i'm very upfront very transparent about it so as i said i think that prison bake is probably a show where if I watch this 10 years from now, I'm probably, probably, I could probably remember all of season one and all these seasons and how they went, what happened, like as soon as I start watching it. So 
I'm going to remember the major things that happened. Maybe not the intricate details in between, but I will definitely remember um, the major plot lines that happened. Um, let's talk about audiovisual or sound design and cinematography. The sound design. Now, I enjoyed this. I'm going to tell you guys. Um, number one. Um, this show was extremely easy to edit so far to get on YouTube, no issues whatsoever. Some very small issues. There were some episodes where the audio was copyrighted. So I had to make my way around it and do some really heavy editing. But for the most part, for most of the episodes, I did not have to do like heavy editing to any of the episodes to make them work. Right. Um, the situation is this for audio. It worked. Never had any issues with the audio. The, it was very appealing. Um, the, the, the sounds that played in between, and this is one of the issues. A lot of people, when I talk about audio, they don't understand because they probably don't watch my tributes that I've done on my older channel. They probably haven't watched those so they don't understand that sound is something that i that i i know you get what i'm saying and i didn't go to school for it i studied audio and how it works in scores how do you create music it's like i can show you guys certificates sound is something that that's coming from me from when i went to military school um, basically take the test from the Royal school of music and stuff like that. So sound is something that has been ingrained in my life for years and years. I know how it works. I know where to place music. I know how to, how to make it blend with visuals and stuff like this is stuff that I, that I've been doing and still do to this day, you know, for special occasions or whatever. And you know, of course I'm not acclimated or not acclimated. That's not the word. I'm not acclaimed. You know what I'm saying? I'm not acclaimed. I'm not, I don't, I, I didn't get no awards or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? But this is something that I know because I've created projects for businesses, advertisements for businesses. When I used to do graphic design and had to, we had to do stuff to create advertisements and stuff like that. I've done them. I could go into my hard drive of my work uh, well not all of my work because a lot of that stuff got when when i got divorced my ex-wife did some 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 grimy shit into the hard drive with all my shit so but um the situation is this i know how audio works i know when to place audio what kind of music to put to stuff it to to um pull emotions and stuff like that and i think overall prison break did an excellent job with how they place sounds when to play like the common theme in the show um the theme the soundtrack the osts and stuff like that for um for the show i'm glad that those osts weren't copyrighted osts um because when that happens then it becomes a bitch to edit for youtube but overall i'm gonna give the sound design um in this show a 10 out of 10 because it never took me out of what i was watching it went along the the little sound i think one my favorite ost was of course probably everybody's favorite ost is the one that goes that's it <laughs> pretty much it very simple but it fits you feel that presence of what you're watching when that sound when that soundtrack comes on of course they had others as well you know chase music and all of that other stuff but that one was a staple throughout the entire series and i loved it um visuals um every season of this show every single season of this show the settings that they chose wherever they filmed for the show, whether it was in an old prison or whatever the situation in the set 
that i don't know if they built it or they went to an actual prison to film it i mean from fox river to you know what i'm saying chicago to sona to yemen to all these places i'm pretty sure they probably didn't go to actual let yemen and film this they probably built that set to be honest but it was well done it was well done you felt like you were in the middle east you know what i'm saying i don't know if they actually went on location and filmed this but at the very least at least i'm going to be watching the featurettes from from the blu-ray as well to see you know how they did season five if it was a set if it was you know they went somewhere in the middle east to film i don't know but i don't felt like it was on location because it's crazy you know what i'm saying um so we'll see we'll see whatever the situation is i will see i will look it up for myself but overall incredible job with the cinematography of setting that mode they really made sona felt like this was in the middle not necessarily the middle of nowhere but it really feel third world country ish you know what i'm saying like it felt like this was just this ain't america you know what i'm saying these prisoners have no rights you know what i'm saying things are different around these parts in panama you know and i haven't traveled in a while since you know covid or whatever i haven't traveled i think the last time i left i left the country was if i'm not mistaken i think it was somewhere around 2016 or something. <laughs> it's been a while since you um since your boy has been out the country um is it i think it was it's got to be later than that i can't i don't think it's that far back but i would have to check to see but um you know my memory has been real spotty lately <laughs> your boy is getting older man and i'm not even gonna lie bro like i i i've noticed the changes coming you know what i'm saying and i'm only what i'm gonna be 37 this september um it's just it's it's one of those things man where you realize you're getting older and you're like trying to you're trying to still you know kind of stimulate that that youth but but you know what i'm saying the old bones ain't allowing it to happen um but it's but it's okay you know what i'm saying it's okay you know you become older you become wiser you remember the things that are important and you don't sweat the small stuff you know what i mean so yes the visual were awesome the sets were beautiful i think they did an excellent job of setting the atmosphere for the audience now let's get to the meat of the matter the stuff that you've been waiting for for me to talk about what did i think of the story of prison break now you should have already known based on my reactions to the show and what i thought and the stuff that i talked about that you should know that the story is going to get a 10 out of 10 from me that's not to say and i've said this before 10 out of 10 me giving the show a 10 out of 10 does not mean that the show didn't that the show or the story was perfect okay it does not mean that it just means that you kept my attention enough for me to be like ah whatever you know what i'm saying like those blemishes didn't interrupt my enjoyment for what i was watching you know for the most part most most of the things that were blemishes or whatever i could be like ah that's it's nothing it didn't it didn't mess up my enjoyment it didn't mess up the entertainment for me now for you it might be different but for me it did not so you should know um the Okay, so the visuals got a 10 out of 10. I didn't say that. But for story, it gets a 10 out of 10 for me. And now let's get into it. Okay, the story of Prison Break from season one through season five, right, was excellent. It was excellent. It kept me entertained. Um, as I said before, it might not take much to entertain me. Um, when something is shitty, it, I will tell you it's shitty. You know, Game of Thrones um, season eight. Um, yeah, 
so when when something is goes bad it's just it just goes bad because it doesn't tie into anything you get what i'm saying and that's one of the biggest things about telling a story is that everything got to be tied you can't just unless this is some sort of side story that you know you, somebody might be interested in like it's got to tie in you can't just tell a story and just decide in the middle of your story to tell a side story that has nothing to do with the main story it just doesn't work with that this is not a video game okay it's not a video game you can't do that <laughs> right at least you're not you're not supposed to do that right you can't just have the main character go off on some meaningless quest okay it just it, it, it no we're not trying to get achievements here right so story is extremely important to me in anything that i watch because whenever i watch a tv show whenever i watch anime i want to be learning something i want to be i want to feel that i'm learning something from from the characters as well you know what i'm saying some things are for pure entertainment and we get it we laugh you know what i'm saying we laugh we enjoy it it's action we woohoo you know what i'm saying and we move on but for me at my age i like to find greater meaning in whatever i consume and i talk about this all the time um as you get older you might start feel the same way or you still want to be silly and that's and that's cool if that's what you want to do but that's not what I choose to do. I, I find it that most people, as they get older, they become wiser and they just don't want to waste the brain cells on stupid shit. Right. So for me, um, yes, I can, you know, I can watch a show and it doesn't have to be super serious or anything like that. But I still try to find meaning in what I'm watching. Currently, me, I'm watching Boondocks on for the first for the first time watching it in completion on patreon and you know the discussions that i'm having by watching that you know episodes by episodes is incredible because maybe 20 years ago you know what i'm saying i would have been just laughing at this stuff and be like ah it's you know what i'm saying it's funny and just funny you get what i'm saying but now i'm watching it and i'm seeing all of these things that boondocks was actually trying to tell people about the black community and you know it's funny in the way how they're portraying it but at the same time it's a discussion to be had in my opinion and i'm having that discussion mind you i'm just talking you know to the camera but regardless you know i'm gonna see how interesting it gets when boondocks comes to youtube we'll see how that goes but for the most part i'm gonna tell you guys what i learned in watching prison break in the story deeper meaning here right what i learned from watching prison break and why this has been not a waste of time if you will um in prison break i learned that you're gonna have people that are very close to you that might have even done you wrong in the past that can end up being your best friend and it doesn't have to be somebody who's pure. It doesn't have to be somebody who has your best interest at heart. And those people can end up being your best friends in life. Um, being a friend over the years that I've learned that in life, you're not going to have a lot of true friendships. Right? You're just not. You get what I'm saying? Like I have a best friend and we might not talk for years. Sometimes it happens. Yes. I have a best friend that I had sometimes years past. We don't talk, but when we do get together and talk, it's a blast. We live in different places, right? So I do understand that sentiment, even though we live in different, um, but we live in the same state, but we live in different places, different cities, right? So sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because of how hard we work and how busy we are, we just don't get the time. But sometimes we, we, we do make plans to meet up at least once a year, right? And sometimes even that plan goes out the window because shit comes up. So sometimes it's years we don't see each other, right? Um, but I know this, 
if there's nobody else that I can call or nobody in the vicinity that I can call. And I, if I can't reach my mom, which we, you know, me and my mom, we live practically, you know, not very far from each other. You know, it's like a, I want to say about a 10 minute drive to get to my mom. Um, my sister lives very close to my mom, practically next door to my mom. So I can call them, but if say, for instance, I cannot get them because I know they're closer. So I'm going to call them first, right? If I need help, right? Oh, me, me, my girl, and I can't reach my girl either. I'm going to call them. You know, you got a, you got a chain of people that you call, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the situation is, right? I know that if it's three o'clock in the morning and I can't reach my mom, my sister, or my girl, I can call him. He lives in a different city. That man is going to tell his wife, <laughs> listen, my friend is in trouble. I got to go. You're good, right? Um, I know this because this has happened before. So that's one of the points that I want to touch on because, you know, if you're ever in trouble and you don't have anybody to call, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are suffering from, you know, depression, from not being able to bond with anybody. Maybe it's life choices you know, that you've made, maybe it's a, you know, a, a situation yeah, but you're, you're in a state of depression, right? Where, you know, nobody around you don't want to deal with you or whatever the situation is, but you know, in your heart of hearts, you're a good person, right? Um, and I'm saying this as hyperbole, you get what I'm saying? I'm saying this as hyperbole. So don't, don't look at it and be like, oh, that's, you know, that's not me. How, how, how do you know he's a good person? Yeah. Like, let's not go into semantics here. Um, so if, if, if you feel like that's what it is and you're not being a terrible person and that's the reason why you don't have a close friend, it doesn't have to be. And this is the thing about friendship is that it doesn't have to be, you know, millions you know it's not like these modern women out here today that just on social media seeking validation it's not about that right you gotta have i would recommend that everybody in life have that one true friend that one true friend i know they're not easy to find because it's 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 something friendship is something that develops over time it's not something that just happens it's not a spur of the moment thing don't let anybody fool you friendship is something that grows over time it is not something that oh we have chemistry let's be friends it 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 just doesn't work like that it's over the years based on actions towards each other and um and, and some other little details as well um so that's one of the things that i learned from from prison break um it's a very value valuable lesson to keep with you going forward in life because sometimes you do forget sometimes you watching a tv show like prison break might spark you to call someone that may be that someone has made a mistake and went to prison you know what i'm saying made a mistake went to prison now you're out and you never chose to contact them again because now you know you know you're too cool for school or whatever the situation is and you don't know what that person might be going through um, people who has, who has been in the prison system, um, when they come out, they're basically put it, put on a blacklist. You know what I mean? They touched on that a little bit, not a lot in this series. You know, they're basically put on a blacklist. They can't, it's not easy for them to find jobs. And sometimes you might own a business and you don't even think that, you know, that person might need help. And watching a show like Prison Break, my spike like, oh, I had a friend. I heard he came out of jail. I didn't even reach out. You know what I'm saying? And I have a business. I could probably give him a job. You know what I mean? So things like that is where I take it to. Where I take it to. When I, when I talk about these shows and I give you guys my perspective on things. Right? So from the story alone, and that's just a few of the lessons that I learned from watching this show. There's plenty of others that I've learned. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Even about trust, 
trusting people. You know what I'm saying? Being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So many times Michael has found himself, even though he's such a smart dude, you can still find yourself in these situations. And I can attest to that. I can attest to that. You know what I'm saying? I can attest to that. So you'll still find yourself in these terrible situations that you never expected in a million years. If you had told me, if you had told me at 10, 12 years old that you are going to be homeless at 19, I would have never believed you. Not in a million years, I would believe you because you don't know what your future holds. You just don't know. To the way out the trajectory I was going when I was that age, I was in high school at 10 years old, was about to be, was about to get, um, was going to go, uh, about to get a scholarship to go to college at 14, mess that up, ended up going to military school. I mean, so many things, right? And then, oh, you're going to be homeless for, for what? What was it? Eight months or some shit like that, right? If you had told me that to, the trajectory I was on was, was only looking up and to drop from here all the way to here because of my personal decisions, mind you, this is not, I'm not blaming anybody, my personal decision, I would have never believed you. I would have never believed you in a million years. You told me that, right? But here I am today coming all the way back from down there, got married, got divorced, built myself back up again to where I can sit here and do reactions with, you know what I'm saying? I, I, the equipment that I started out with on YouTube, the equipment I started out with, I had no business <laughs> doing that. Most people start off YouTube with their phones. You know what I'm saying? Before they can afford to, you know what I'm saying? Now, anything anything that i want i don't have to wait on you know patreon or anything like that anything that i want to i can buy you know for equipment for for this at any moment you know what i'm saying if any of these monitors break any of these tvs computer anything break down i can just go buy it if i want to i can just go buy it replace it whenever i want to if you had told me when i was homeless that I was going to be here 15 years later. I would have never believed you, but we got to keep on pushing, right? We got to keep pushing. We got to keep hoping. We got to keep, um, you know, that in our head that we, we have to keep moving forward. We can't lay on, you know, just, just being, or just existing, right? You just got to move forward. You know what I mean? You just got to keep moving forward. Pick yourself up. And one of the things too, don't let other people tell you who you are. Know who you are. Understand who you are. And this is not about speaking your truth and all this other stuff. I would never say stuff like that to you guys because shit is going to happen. It's going to happen. This is not. You know what I'm saying? As even people who are born with with silver spoons in, in their mouths still experience problems in life. Look at what Johnny Depp had to go through the other day. You know what I'm saying? All that abuse and she's still denying it. <laughs> she's still denying it to this day. She, she never abused Johnny Depp. You know what I'm saying? Even though she was caught on tape. You know what I'm saying? Look at what he had to go through. And that man is a millionaire, man. Like how many times over? He's a millionaire. Right. And the thing about it is it, it's not, it's not about that. Life is not about that. So lessons, 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 man, from this story, this story kept, kept me thoroughly entertained. The characters, man. One of the things that I love about this story was the character development from season one to season five, especially Michael Lincoln, um, Sucre as well. Of course, Sarah, Sarah, I think had one of the best arcs in the story. You know what I'm saying? Coming from being a, a, a doctor at a, at the prison to being such an intricate part of the story. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, at first I, you know, I was wondering where the hell do I know 
her from and it's because i watched walking dead but it's been a couple of years now since i started to watch the walking dead um so this was way back so i couldn't remember expect spider until a subscriber actually told me that hey that's Lori from The Walking Dead. She looks nothing like that <laughs> in The Walking Dead because, you know what I'm saying? Um, she didn't look anything like that because, I mean, it's The Walking Dead. So most most of the actors, they don't wear any makeup or anything like that. Um, so it, she was in her natural beauty. Um, I was never attracted to her. But, man... Miss Sarah was a babe. You know what I'm saying? Sarah was a babe. Back in the day, season five, Sarah was older and, and wasn't it. <laughs> but that's not to say that she didn't still look good. That's just to say that she's not aging very well. <laughs> she's she's lost a lot of her radiance, if you will. But overall, talking about the characters, I have to touch on the fact that one of the things that Prison Break did was they always brought beautiful women to the show. You know, talking about Sheba talking about Gretchen, talking about Sophia and Sarah, of course. Um, they always did throughout the seasons. Um, whenever they introduced a woman, not too attracted to the to the agent lady from season five, but you know what I mean? Um, she died anyways, who cares? <laughs> um, but for the most part, I really did enjoy that factor you know what i'm saying i enjoy that factor i like a good face i can look up look at when it comes on to watching tv shows i, I just love it beautiful character i was about to say character design <laughs> i was about to say character design that you know like i'm talking about anime but beautiful women they brought to the show appreciate it i really do appreciate that um you know what i'm saying um I'm not saying that if they were ugly, I would have enjoyed the show less. It's just that I love to have that factor when I'm watching TV shows. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, when I was watching The Sopranos, a lot of people was like, oh, this dude has a fetish for older women. But the older women, they look good. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> they look good. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to cap and make it seem like oh, older women. You have older women that look good, bro, naturally. So, man, don't be a hater. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't be a hater. I'm not going to cap about it, but that's the um the situation, right? That's the situation with the story, the character development. Um Lincoln had a great story arc as well, Michael. Um great story arc throughout the five throughout the five seasons, always getting in trouble. Jesus Christ, Lincoln. Um Michael, um yeah, some people was there for only a season and a half. Um John Abruzzi um, of course, some people left after season four. It was good to see um, Kellerman in the early parts of season five. Seems like he was confirmed dead. I thought maybe he didn't die, but hey, Kellerman actually, you know, Van Gogh actually did kill him. So, okay. He wasn't turned yet, but Kellerman did put some things in his head about Poseidon that had him thinking just like, dude, um, you're being played. You know what I mean? And turns out to be tr true that the motive behind Poseidon and all of this other stuff was personal. It had nothing to do with even finding the killer because he was the killer. You know what I mean? So, um, as I said, that was extremely incredible. So, what I wanted to... I, I don't go in depth and talk about season one through season five story and all of this other stuff i don't do that i just give you guys an overall feel of what i felt about the show and what i felt about the story as i said 10 out of 10 um from everything they showed i felt like i was thoroughly entertained for the five seasons um michael schofield might be this one of the smartest characters i don't think um he reminded me a lot of Walter White from Breaking Bad. Um, the reason being, the reason why I say this, um, I think Walter White is probably one of the smartest characters I've watched in every any TV show, and, and, and the TV show ended up being good. 
um i don't know what do you guys think i'm putting it in you your guys hand what your opinion is i will respond to the comments let me know if you believe that walter white is smart is smarter than michael schofield who do you think is smarter um i think i still i would still give walter white the edge and the reason for this is because um because of what he was doing it's not about it, you know what i'm saying it's not about a plan if you're talking about a plan walter white never really had a plan <laughs> you know what i'm saying he never really had a plan he was just doing he was just he was smart in in the sense that he was a science teacher he knew chemistry and he was creating the, the best meth out there that <laughs> that was where his smarts but i still give him the edge for the for survival you know what i'm saying i give him the edge for survival because i think he i think in my opinion um I don't know the danger just felt so much more real in breaking bad the, the the villains felt more compelling you know what i'm saying and that's why i'm giving him the edge because i felt like the way i felt when i, when I was watching breaking bad and anxious i never really felt that when i was watching prison break i never felt for for there were so many times in breaking bad that i felt like yo this is it <laughs> this is it for walter man this is it this day no way there's no coming back from this but that show was done so well man it's, it's hard it's hard but i don't know man i'm gonna put it in your in you guys hands you guys let me know and maybe you have maybe you can convince me all you prison break fans out there maybe that you can convince me that michael is smarter than walter white maybe you can maybe you can he's really smart he's got it you know what i'm saying he's got it but i don't know man it, it's close for me it's close for me but let me know what you guys think in the comment section man um if you think michael is smarter than walter white now for um let's talk about my top 10 shows of all time did prison break crap my top 10 yes it did I said I had to finish season five to know if it did. Uh, midway through the season, I was like, yes, it has cropped my top 10 now. It has taken the number 10 spot on my list, and I can confirm that. So, um, my top 10 shows, TV shows of all time. I'm probably going to, to, um, to upset some people, but you have to take this with a grain of salt okay this is my subjective list lists are subjective they're not the rule okay they are not the rule it is not gospel okay and you guys can let me know what your top 10 tv shows of all time is um in the comment section as a rebuttal to mine of course um i know there are shows out there that you guys have watched that i've never watched um so the top, it, it's, it, you know what I'm saying? The, the top 10 for me is very malleable. You know what I'm saying? It's malleable. And a lot of these shows is because of suggestions that I've watched right before, right? It's because of um, um, suggestions of stuff that I've watched before, okay? So don't get, don't get in your feelings, okay? Don't get in your feelings, all right? Please don't get in your feelings when you hear the results, all right? Please just take it for what it is. Put your top 10 in the comment section and we will be good to go, all right? So, this is in no particular order, okay? This is just my top 10. It's in no particular order, all right? So, all right, so I'm gonna tell you guys what I have on my top 10 TV shows of all time right now for me. Okay, I have Peaky Blinders, The Last Kingdom, Dark, how much is that? Peaky Blinders, The Last Kingdom, Dark, right? I have, of course, Prison Break. I have Black Sails. I have The Sopranos. I have, um, let me see here, where am I on the list? Okay. Um, how much is that? Six. Okay. Um, 
I don't even know. I, I, I actually had Vikings in my top 10 and I'm wondering if, yeah. Um, that's crazy. Nirvana in fire. Now I'm going to take a little time to talk about Nirvana in fire because I feel like even though you guys perhaps have never seen the show and you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Nirvana in fire is actually a, um, it's a Chinese drama, right? And I know you guys see me watching actually part two of it currently on the channel, which you guys probably never click on, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, that, that's more than okay. You know what I'm saying? If you guys don't want to do that, that's fine. Right? So you have Breaking Bad as well. So if you want to go check it out, you can check it out. It's a really good drama. Um, I, if, if you're going to watch it, watch part one, please watch part one. It is the most, trust me, you're not going to be disappointed. Okay. You're just, you're just not going to be, I don't believe anybody could watch that show and be like, this is terrible TV. I know you don't like, you probably don't like watching subtitles, but that's okay. So how many have I given you guys already? I think that's seven. band of brothers band of brothers it's another one okay band of brothers and um i said breaking bad already right how many is that all right let's <laughs> let's start over because i think i already did 10 um all right so breaking bad let me count them on my fingers here um Breaking Bad, Dark, The Last Kingdom, Peaky Blinders, um, Breaking Bad, Prison Break, The Sopranos, Nirvana in Fire, The Walking Dead, and Game of Thrones. That is a 10, right? And you know, I wrote it down and I'm here looking for the document and I, I think I closed it and didn't save it. Um, yeah, so those, that's my top 10. I'm pretty sure that's what I wrote down on the list when I made it last night. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys why Game of Thrones is still on my top 10 is because even though season eight sucked, even though season eight sucked, it is still a great TV show and it was if they had done season eight right, um, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be others that come in and knock Game of Thrones off my top 10, to be honest. Um, but um, right now, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be <laughs> something. Uh, you know what? You know what? Screw Game of Thrones. Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. Bruh. How could I forget about Sons of Anarchy? Sons of Anarchy is in my top 10. I don't know how I forgot about that. Sons of Anarchy is in my top 10. Has to be in my top 10 TV shows of all time. Right? That's my top 10. Let me know what your top 10 is. Probably a show I haven't probably shows on there that I have not watched. Pretty sure I named a couple that you guys have not seen. I will highly recommend um, anything, any one of those shows that is on my top 10. Um, so officially Game of Thrones is not on my top 10 anymore. And it's slowly heading to the top 30. <laughs> because every time I get a new show that just has great what anything, I just... I push Game of Thrones further, further on down the line because that season eight really crapped that show, man. Really did. It really did. So there you go, guys. Officially, you know what my top 10 is. Put yours in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think of the top 10 TV shows of all times for you.
and I will, um, I'm pretty sure they may have shows on there that you guys have suggested that I watch. Um, a lot of people want me to watch, um, some people want me to watch Battlestar Galactica, um, which is a show that I have on the list to start very soon as well. Um, what else? Yeah, apps about covers it for my review it was a long one. I've been talking for like 40 minutes now. Um, so cool stuff, man. Really good show. Prison Break definitely crap my top 10. It's in my top 10. You guys said it's the greatest TV show of all times. I've watched better. <laughs> it's in my top 10, but it's not number one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've watched better. Um, but that's just my opinion. It may not be yours, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We can still be friends. We can still be friends. Okay. So we'll see what happens with the next shows that I'm, that I'm going to watch. Um, for sure, for sure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the journey. I know I did. Thank you guys once again for tuning in every time clicked on the video, no matter how late you were. Sometimes when I look at the views, yes, it was a little discouraging at times, but I pushed through it because I know, you know what I'm saying? Eventually, eventually, you know, one day YouTube might find in their favor to start pushing my videos out, you know, to people, or maybe I'll watch a series that people enjoy, you know, um, it is what it is. I loved Prison Break, and I know you guys love my reaction to it. You let me know as much. Thanks for all the kind comments. Even though sometimes when I couldn't do episodes or whatever, you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, as I get older, you know, it, <laughs> the body is breaking down, man. I can tell that the body is breaking down. Think I'm feeling pain in places that I never felt pain before. And sometimes I'm out of commission and you guys are, you know, you understand you're not like some of these, um, people out here that when, you know, something is happening to you and you tell your fans that, Hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. or I'm not going to be able to do this. They're like, Oh, he done, he gone big time and doesn't care about his people anymore. Or, you know, you guys are not like that. And, and I promise you guys that I will never change because I've been here for three years now and I've been talking about the same stuff, doing the same things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I promise you guys, I will never change, man, because that's just who I am now. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of, I'm one of the old guys. <laughs> I'm one of the old guys now that, you know, try to educate and help the younger generation become wiser. <laughs> I'm one of the OGs now. Anyways, guys, um, I've said enough. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much once again you already know gratitude is never enough um i promise you guys love you guys you guys have been awesome thanks for everything appreciate y'all hopefully you guys stick around for the next series it's your boy terabyte reacts and i will see you guys for the next one peace Thank you.